Hey guys, and welcome to my Tormented Demons guide, and uh, I promised this like months and months ago, and I just finally decided to make it, so here it is, and I uh, hope you guys learn something and enjoy it. So first things up is the stats of the Tormented Demons, like all my other PVM guides. Uh, their combat level is 170 uh, life points, blah, 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 and then their weakness varies, so like when they are weak to mage, they're weak to fire spells, when they're weak to range, I think they're weak to bolts, and they don't have a melee weakness other than the dark light. So their charm rates are pretty decent as well. You get three per charm drop. So because the drop rate of the blue charms is about a third and you get three per drop, it's about one blue charm for kill, uh, per kill um, on average. So if you kill a thousand, you should expect around a thousand blue charms and that is pretty decent for um, good money here. I put the cash per hour as varies because it really depends if you get a limb drop or not, which are like about 15 mil at the time of recording. So if you do get one, obviously it'll make your money a lot better that hour. So um, I'd really say that it's probably three to four mil an hour, like almost constant if you do it um, hours on end and you get you know a decent amount of limb drops. But you could go completely dry for one hour or even three hours and it'll skew your uh, money per hour. So I just put varies. Um, you'd really have to test it yourself of your hourly rate. Next up, we have the recommended stats and some requirements. So the only requirement I know of that you need for Tormented Demons is while Guthic sleeps, or Guthic sleeps, I mean, sorry. And other than that, um, I would just say a, a really high combat level really helps here. And proficiency using the ability bar, honestly, unless you want to use momentum and revolution. So yeah. As for the recommended stats, I'd say 92 prayer or higher, because then you can have soul split, which is really useful here. It's useful here if you don't want to like switch prayers all the time, because they do switch styles all the time. I think it's kind of annoying. But if you're doing momentum or something, it's really easy to uh, switch prayers. It just really makes the kills a little easier. So herbler wise, 88 would be pretty nice because that gives you all the extremes because then you can boost up to like 90 or something. But uh, I do recommend having at least like 96 for overloads or whatever. Or you can have lower if you uh, boost up. But um, overloads are really nice here because because you're hybriding, it's good to have all of your stats boosted up in one potion. So uh, don't fret if you don't have overloads, but you will have to bring a lot more pots if you don't have them. As for summoning, I said 67 plus because uh, that's for a tortoise, which is really useful here. You can hold your items and everything like that. Um, if you have 88, a unicorn is really good as well because then it can heal you for you know basically free other than the scroll cost. And then I use a yak, which is 96 or higher summoning. Uh, I like a yak because then you can bank all the items if you wanted to, but most of, most of the drops now are noted, so it really doesn't matter. Um, I'd probably say go with a unicorn if you have the level. Now for the inventory and gear setups. And I have three different hybrid setups. So here's melee and range. Um, you can obviously downgrade like the Drygors and Chaotix or whatever if you need to. I just put, you know, the basics down there. And I do recommend using hybrid armors instead of switching between the two armors because it is a little easier. But I put the armors because it is more DPS if you use the DPS versions of the armor. And uh, they do usually have more defense than the hybrid armors, but it really is up to you if you don't want to, you know, constantly switch and that, all that. So you can model your inventory um, on mine. You really can just change it up depending on your needs. So uh, downgrade if needed if I haven't said that before. And let's go to the next hybrid setup. So the next one is melee and magic, and it's basically the same thing. Um, you can switch it up a little bit if you want. And then the third one is magic and range, which I prefer this one because then you can be at a distance from the tormented demon and it won't melee you um, if you have it lured. So I prefer this one out of all the three that I just showed you, but you can use any of these if you want. You can really just try it if you want. I think it's, you know, overkill, but so that's enough of like the gears and everything else in this guide. Let's go actually how to kill them and lure them. So I'll meet you guys there. So to get to Tormented Demons, you have to go to the Lumbridge basement and then go through the little crack in the wall and then go all the way south into the Lumbridge caves and you eventually get to a cave where you get into a chasm and then there's like the glowing blue things. Use your sapphire lantern on, on those things and click into the chasm and then you're like in the basement of the place or whatever. And then continue south and you go through like rock face and then you keep on going and you're eventually at the Tormented Demons. So once you get there, luring them can be kind of tricky, but if you use my method, it is pretty decent. So you go near the rocks on the north side, and then you bring that one with you, the one that is right by the um, entry, and then trap him near the rock that he was trapped on that I showed you, and then find the other one by the, the way eastern side of the north, and then bring him near the other rock, and he should be trapped too. Sometimes there's also a middle one 
that you can trap in the direct middle of the two that I showed you. But he wasn't there for me, but uh, later he does come and I'll trap him. You trap him in that little middle area and then you have three trapped and they can't at all attack you at the same time. So it does really, really help and you can just pick them off one at a time. So to kill these things, you have to use your dark light right away unless they have a prey mage. I mean, unless they have a prey melee in which you can't. But you use your dark light to get rid of the shield. But if they have the prey melee, you just use one of your styles until it changes to your style of prayer. And then you can use your dark light, get rid of the shield, and then you'll deal normal damage. And then you just oscillate between your two styles throughout the entire kill. Another thing that can really speed up your kills is um, use thresholds as, as much as you can. For the range, use snapshot because it does two quick shots and they both count no matter how many damage or how much damage you do. Because they uh, it switches styles like after 3100 damage. I mean it switches prayers that it has every 3100 damage or something. So um, if you do snapshot, you can do sh two shots that each can hit, you know, 3,000, 3,000. So it's 6,000 damage, which can really uh, speed up the kill because then you have more damage per, like, cycle. And then uh, the magic ability for that is wild magic. I use that one. And then for melee, um, I, uh, both of them really work. Uh, assault and destroy both work really well, but I think assault is probably the best out of the two for those. So yeah, it's pretty simple. You just oscillate your uh, styles um, based on its prayer and then if you want do pray uh, change your prayer and stuff but it is kind of hard to make this all easier you don't have to do abilities like me like freehand and you have to do all the abilities or whatever you can use revolution which really really uh makes the kills a lot easier you can also use momentum which i think you get slower kills but um it is a lot more relaxed so you can you know fiddle down fiddle around with that stuff but i just prefer using abilities so yeah, there's not much more I can say about the killing the Tormented Demons. I uh, hope you guys learned something, and uh, maybe you guys can try these things out and get a lot of money. Because the limbs are worth a, a bit of money. They are going down right now. They're like 15 mil. They used to be like 19 mil. But, oh well, they're still 15 mil, which is really good. And they're quite common in the terms of like rarity of some items. So, I mean, you can expect them probably one every 2-3 hours or something like that. Maybe four if you're unlucky. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys in the next video.